Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back, or it's your first time here, welcome. So today, we are gonna be doing yet another one of my five best and five worst. If you're new to my channel, this is a series that I like to do where I either focus on a particular product category like contour powders, mascaras, concealers, foundations, or I focus on a particular brand. Too Faced was probably the most requested in my Kat Von D five best and five worst, so I decided to put together all of my faves and all of my least faves today. And by the way, I will put the link that I created of the play list that I made that contains all of my five best and five worst videos so that you guys can check it out if you have missed any of them. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please let me know all of your thoughts down below. Let me know some of your favorite as well as some of your least favorite products from Too Faced. I would love to hear all of your thoughts. Of course, give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. So without further ado, Let's get into it. So as per usual, we're gonna start off on a positive note as I normally like to do with these types of videos. So let's just start off with probably some of my favorite lip products just in general, not just from the brand. And this is the Melted Collection from Too Faced. So if you're not familiar with the Too Faced Melted line, they are basically liquefied lipsticks. So don't get it confused with something like a liquid lipstick. These do not dry completely matte. They have way more of a creamier finish to them. So because these are are actually so opaque. You don't have to apply a lot of the product in order to get a lot of impact. So even though these are liquid, you would think that they could like potentially be thick and gloopy on the lips, but that is not the case at all. But because of just like the texture and the pigmentation, you're actually able to apply a really thin layer of the product, which is really nice because it feels very lightweight and just like not like much on the lips, but I actually find them to be quite hydrating. So if you want something that's gonna make your lips look nice and plush that has a lot of pigment, this is definitely a really great lip product to check out. Something else that really, you know, just seals the deal with this product is the scent. Now Too Faced does chocolate scents really, really well. And I say chocolate scents because I don't really love the scents of the Peach Collection personally, but I love, 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 love all of their chocolate scented products. They actually came up with a chocolate line within the Melted Collection and it literally smells like Nesquik. But even the original ones smell just like sugar. They're just really, really delicious. So those are the melted lipsticks. So next, I really wanted to talk about the Too Faced Love Flush blushes, and they really have become like some of my favorite and most used blushes. There was a point where this shade right over here called Baby Love was like in all of my favorites videos. It was like the only blush that I would use every day. These three over here are my favorites. This one is called Love Hangover, and this is a beautiful like rosy pink. It has a bit of a sheen. It will give a little bit of like a glow to your cheeks as well. Let's actually apply a little bit of this to my cheeks right now. Why not? I'm not wearing a ton of blush anyway. And what I also really love about the formula is that it's not super powdery or very intense. So what's nice about that is that when you put your brush in here, you're not gonna get a lot of powder kick off. So that means that you're not gonna pick up like too much product. So when you actually go in to apply it, it's not gonna be like super intense right off the bat. You're actually able to build it up to the intensity that you want. So you can either do something nice and sheer or you can build it up if you want it to be more intense. And I like that type of control when it comes to a blush. I don't like it when a blush is too powder pigmented because never really works out. You just end up with really intense cheeks that you that you have to tone down afterwards anyway. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit of this to the apples of my cheeks and blend backwards. Like I mentioned, Baby Love is my favorite shade in the collection. It's like the most perfect mauve pinky nude color. I feel like this is the type of blush that really does go with a lot of different eye looks. Like when I didn't want my blush to clash with what was going on on the rest of my face, but I also didn't want to do something too neutral. This was the one that I would always go to because it had that touch of pink, but it wasn't too intense that it would, you know, distract from everything else, but it adds like a beautiful flush. And then I will always love you. Oh my God, this one's so pretty. This is definitely my second favorite. If you love a good coral blush, this with like a super bronzy cheek. Oh, yes. I mean, I couldn't do a five best five worst of Too Faced and not talk about the Too Faced bronzers. I feel like the Too Faced bronzers are sort of cult classics. I mean, these have been around for a really long time. They've been spoken about for a really long time. I definitely bought these because they were so incredibly hyped up on YouTube. Everybody was talking about them. The main selling point was of course that it smelled like chocolate. This was the first like chocolate scented product, I believe. I'm pretty sure, don't quote me on that, that Too Faced release. So people were sort of going crazy over it. And I've gone through at least three or four of these. And then not too long ago, probably like a few years ago, they came out with the Milk Chocolate Soleil bronzer, which I actually like even more 
than the chocolate soleil but just because it just fits my skin tone a little bit more they're just really great there's really not much to say about them other than i think that they're really nice bronzers and definitely some of my go-to's for sure so next let's talk about some eyeshadow now you may be a little bit surprised that i'm not going to be talking about the chocolate bar palettes or the peach palette those are definitely nice palettes am i completely in love with them not really. <laughs> I feel like there are other palettes that I like a lot more. Don't get me wrong, the formula and the eyeshadows are nice on all of those palettes. I just don't really love the color combinations. But a palette that Too Faced actually very recently released that I have been smitten by is the Just Peachy Mattes palette. This has been sitting on my everyday vanity and every time I go in to do my eyeshadow, this has been the eyeshadow palette that I've been reaching for. This is a completely matte palette um, and sometimes mattes could be difficult to work with. They could be chalky, they could be difficult to blend. I've had no issues with these. They work really, really well. They blend into each other beautifully and they just work. And this palette really just does have like everything that I need to create an eye look. You've got your more highlighting shades, you have great transition shades, you've got beautiful crease shades and deepeners. Because this is a completely matte palette, I really like the fact that I'm able to sort of combine it with more metallic or shimmery palettes to complete different types of looks. And I just think it's a really great one. It's definitely my favorite palette that Too Faced has come out with. We have made it to the last of my favorite products. And this is actually a product that I feel like doesn't really get a ton of love. Maybe like a few years ago, people were talking about this product a ton, but nobody really talks about it a lot anymore. And I feel like I'm guilty of that as well. This is the Too Faced Candlelight Glow Warm Glow Highlighting Powder Duo. This is a highlighter from Too Faced. Now this is such a beautiful highlighter. It is so up my alley. Now if you like a really, really intense, glowy, seen from the heavens, metallic type of highlighter, to be honest, you probably won't love this because it's not super metallic or really, really intense. Instead, it has a really beautiful soft glow to it, which personally I find to be very, very flattering. So here it is swatched on my hand and you can see that it just gives the skin a really beautiful glossy look. And it's really nice that because there's two shades in here, you do have like different options with how to wear it. You could either use one or the other or you can mix them both. So you get sort of like three highlighters in one. Definitely one of my faves that I think you should check out. All right. Alright guys, it is now time to move into the more negative aspect of this video where I talk about my five least favorite products from the brand. Now I do really want to stress that even though these products may not have worked for me, they may work for you. We all have different preferences, we have different skin types, products react differently on all of us. That's my little disclaimer that I always like to do before this part of the video. So let's get right into it. So the highlighter that I just showed you guys is a highlighter done just so so well and I was Really excited when I saw that Too Faced was coming out with new highlighters not too long ago. These are the Love Light Prismatic Highlighters. And I was really disappointed when I realized that this is like so not even in the same realm as the other highlighter that I just showed you guys. First of all, I just want to say that the way that they're pressed is really, really beautiful. I mean, it's sort of like a diamond heart, which is so cute. And I really do like that part of it. But I mean, I don't really like the product. So that sort of cancels out the cute packaging for me. It's funny because when you swatch them on your hand, I just swatched the lighter pinkier shade right over here. But even though it swatches really nicely on the hand, I find it really difficult to actually build Build up when you're trying to apply it on the tops of cheekbones like it takes a few layers in order to get it to really show up nicely and once it actually shows up I find that the product isn't very flattering it's like a very very metallic highlighter that I find accentuates absolutely everything on the skin I think there are other highlighters out there that just work a lot better um, and these just don't really match up to them unfortunately so the next product that I want to talk about is actually the better than sex waterproof mascara specifically. Now I actually don't have the waterproof version in my collection currently just because I think I got rid of it a long time ago. The only difference look wise between the normal uh, better than sex and the waterproof one is the packaging color. The waterproof one is blue. Now I just want to say generally the better than sex mascara I have a bit of like a love hate relationship with. I used to love it. It used to be my go to mascara. I don't even know how many tubes I've gone through and I never used to have any problems with it until one day it just started to smudge on me like crazy. But now I can't really wear this without it literally just going all over my face by the end of the day. And it's sort of unfortunate because I do actually like the way that it makes my eyelashes look. When they came out with the waterproof version, I was really excited because I was like, amazing, perfect. Now I can actually wear the Better Than Sex mascara and get the effect that I like and it won't go anywhere because it's waterproof. But that was not the case. The waterproof version of the mascara smudged <laughs> 
even worse than the like normal mascara, which was so confusing to me because typically waterproof mascaras don't really budge, but for some reason it just did not work for me at all. It went everywhere. It just really was not my jam. I really just prefer not to look like a raccoon. That's like the look that I don't usually like to go for. So that is why it's one of my least favorite products from the brand. And yeah, that's all I gotta say about it. Next, we've got the Hangover 3-in-1 Replenishing Primer and Setting Spray. There's one very simple reason why I do not like the setting spray. And that reason is because it makes my skin feel sticky and tacky when I apply it. Now there's two ways that you could look at that. It could be a good thing to use it like as a primer because typically like stickier primers or sprays will help your foundation almost like adhere to your skin a little bit better. But for me, the sensation was so uncomfortable that it's just not even worth it for me. It just literally made my skin feel like terrible and almost like tight because it was so sticky. There are definitely other setting sprays that I use all the time that do not do that. I set my makeup, they prep my face, and they do not make my skin feel sticky. Instead, they make it feel hydrated. So this next product is the Peach Blur. Now this is a very confusing product and I feel like a lot of YouTubers were pretty mystified with this product because I feel like nobody really got it. Now this is supposed to be a translucent smoothing finishing powder that's infused with peach and sweet fig cream. I don't know why <laughs> they say that this is translucent because when you open it up, it clearly has like a peach pink tint to it. So it's not translucent because translucent would mean that it didn't have any color to it at all. And when you swatch it, like it's pink. So when you use this as a finishing powder, like it suggests, it turns your whole face sort of pink. So then I was like, okay, it doesn't work as a finishing powder, obviously. I was like, okay, what if I use this as a blush chopper or a highlighter? Because it does have like a little bit of a glow to it. And fortunately, the pink is too subtle to use as a blush chopper and the glow is also too subtle to use as a highlighter. It doesn't really work as a setting powder, a blush chopper or a highlighter. So I don't know what to use it for. So that's why I would probably avoid it. I just think it's a little bit strange. But if you have this product and you've made it work somehow, please let me know how in the comments because I would really love to know. So the last product in this video that I wanted to talk about is actually a product that I don't have in my collection right now. I got rid of them a while ago because I really didn't like them that much. And it's rare that I will actually get rid of products because I usually honestly save them for videos like these. And that product is the Lip Injection Gloss. So the product is basically a lip plumper and a lip gloss combined. And I have tried some lip plumpers in the past. And yes, some of them do tingle. Some of them even sting a little bit, but they're always bearable. However, for me, I don't know if I'm just really, really sensitive but applying that lip gloss was like the most painful experience. The stinging sensation was just way too much and I just can't imagine wanting to apply that lip gloss like throughout the day and just having that pain on your lips, I just don't think it's worth it. Like the first time that I tried to wear it, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna leave it on. I'm gonna go through the pain and we'll just see if it actually does anything to my lips and it didn't make my lips look any bigger in the end. So in my mind, you're going through all that pain for no reason at all. Even if it did make my lips look like three times the size, I don't even think I would use it just because it was that painful. So guys, that is it for today's video and all my favorites and least favorites from Too Faced. Do not forget to let me know some of your faves and least faves down below. Of course, give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy these types of five best, five worst videos and let me know also, by the way, what you would like to see next. So I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.